What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Poe Row. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Poe Row and What's the Numbers I provided. Today, we're back with another profile piece. This one is on Tommy Hill, a.k.a. Tommy Butter from the Ram Squad, a rap group out of Philadelphia that dropped several independent records in the late 90s and a major label album in the year 2001. Coming out of the Rich and Allen Homes, a housing project in North Philadelphia, Tommy Hill, Boy Bax, 6 9 Suave, and Wiz Gam formed the Ram Squad, which was short for Richard Allen Mob, who before getting into rap was just a local neighborhood crew. The standout of the rap group was Tommy Hill, real name John Wilson, for his bigger than life persona the rapper portrayed. Tommy, whose mom was killed when he was 13 and whose father had been in jail most of his life, started the Ram Squad with a group of friends in the mid 90s. In 1997, the leader of the Ram Squad, Ronnie Bank Johnson was shot and killed at a North Philadelphia barbershop. A short time after Bank's death, Tommy and Joey Merlino, the former Philadelphia mob boss, would meet and become good friends. Joey would end up helping Tommy and the Ram Squad secure a major label deal with Universal Records through some connections he had in the music industry. Now, during the time that the Ram Squad is building their buzz in the rap game, the Fed State are also a drug gang that operates out the Richard Allen Projects. During the years, they released numerous projects while leading up to their major label debut album, Random Access Money, released on Universal Records in 2001, which featured their most successful single, Ballers Up In Here. While enjoying the local fame and marginal success of his rap career, Tommy Hill ran into some trouble with the law after he sold almost two ounces of crack to an informant who was wired up during the deal in 2003. It would later be revealed that the Ram Squad had been under federal investigation for their involvement in the city's drug trade. Faced with 10 years in prison, the feds will start to apply pressure on Tommy in an attempt to get him to provide information on Joey, Jolino, Joey Merlino, Sham Sadin Ali, and Kabani Savage, who were all allegedly some of Philadelphia's top underworld figures who the feds were trying to build criminal cases on at the time. Later on down the line, all three would go to jail, but Tommy was never named as, as an informant on their cases. But during the time of Tommy's incarceration, the feds were bugging cells of a few inmates who were housed there in an effort to gain information on a few different cases and people they were investigating. Tommy, who didn't know the feds were listening on his convos between him and his cellmate, Benjamin Belmont would get their cells into more trouble when they recorded talking about retaliation and preferred weapons of choice Belmont wants to use to avenge a brother's death who died in the middle of a drug war. After a raid on the Belmont's residence where they found marijuana, guns, grenades, and an artillery rocket, the feds threatened to charge Tommy Hill also with the Belmont's on charges of harboring drugs and weapons of mass destruction. Rather than fight it out in court, Tommy agrees to cooperate and testifies in the 2004 trial of Benjamin Belmont, his father, and brother. They would eventually all get convicted and sentenced to prison. After he helps the government and testifies on the Belmonts, Tommy is rewarded for his cooperation with a 24-month sentence with which he has some time served and ends up getting released a year later. Once Tommy's released, he lays low and moves to Atlanta. But after a few years of staying under the radar in Philly, he pops back up on the scene going by the name Tommy Butter with the hopes of getting back into the music business and also clearing his name in the city of Philadelphia. He starts by doing a series of interviews, first with George Anastasia, a Philly mob reporter. Then he does a Bad Cave radio interview where he gets the details surrounding his case. Eventually, Tommy gets into it with other Philly rappers like Beanie Siegel and Oskino from the group State Property. They bomb on Tommy in interviews of their own, calling him a rat and basically telling him to go back to Atlanta because the city of Philly got no love for him. Tommy, who still has some people in his corner from his old neighborhood, Richard Allen, starts to make his own way around the city in vlog videos where he starts to take shots at Beanie Siegel and Oskino, letting them know that they're broke while he's living a good life on the 34th floor, which is his new entertainment company. Since re-emerging, Tommy, since re-emerging over the weeks, Tommy starts to pop up in Philly a lot more to the point people are starting to think maybe he can reclaim the spot he once had in the music scene. He starts working with young Philly artists like Lean Bean and has plans on opening a music label in Philadelphia that can showcase the city's talents. But before any of those plans could come to fruition, Tommy is shot outside a bar in the uptown section of Philly and dies two days later. Some say it was a robbery. Some say it was a hit. Some say it was a hit disguised as a robbery. We don't know, but no one was ever charged with killing Tommy as the case is still unsolved today. But yo, this is a profile piece on Tommy Hill, a.k.a. Tommy Butter out of the Ram Squad. You know what I'm saying? Tommy 
and the Rams squad they had their run in Philly they had the city on lock this was before major figures before state property before Meek Mill they had their run they was out there the first one soon the big videos with the with the jeeps and all that the four wheelers out you know what I'm saying go check that out on, on YouTube if you want my favorite track from them is um people in my business the city in my business when you have the courthouse rapping you can check that out on YouTube also but you know once Tommy went bad you know what I'm saying he ratted you know what I'm saying so brotherly love the city of brotherly don't got too much love for rats out there so it looked like something went left or it could have just been an honest robbery that went left you don't know but he did leave he did lose his life you know what i'm saying maybe he should have just stayed low in atlanta doing what he was doing but you know sometimes that fame bug it'll bite you once you had it before you want that fame and that love and that energy around you again so like once he started getting on youtube and doing the interviews and all that like he got that feeling again like when he was back rapping because he kept on going kept on going he didn't just come in say his piece and get low or try to go behind the scenes he was you know doing more videos and vlogs and starting to be seen a lot more in philly and look like it might have cost him his life but yo this was the numbers tv it's your boy poe wrote i missed the video last because youtube was playing with the um reviewing it and putting the green and the yellow and all that but i'm back this week man you got five videos coming this week it's my first one profile piece on tommy hill man hope you enjoyed it subscribe like share all that good stuff go check the instagram out you know what i'm saying follow up over there and I'll be back before you know it, man. It's What's the Numbers TV? It's your boy, Paul Rowe. I'm out of here. Peace.